We have two more speakers, and it sounds like we're ready to continue. Please welcome, from one of our partners, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Jan Sturesson. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, PwC is a big firm, you know, and we also have a newest office in Sweden. It's in Landskrona. I think that's a worthwhile a big hand. Uh, it wasn't. Oh, good, good. So let me, let me tell you something in 20 minutes about uh, what, what you think about meetings and the meeting industry, because we think that the meeting industry is one of the most important cross-industry, cross-sectors, cross-basically ba everything to be understood in a complete new way when you calculate why should you have a meeting, a small one like the Olympic Games, or a, a, a smaller, a big one like, uh, sorry, a big like the Olympic Games, or a small one like we have here, or even two, three people. So let's kick off and ask some questions. Number one, what are you doing? Are you uploading or downloading when you are in a meeting? Most people download, taking ideas and then, you know, making, reinvent them. But I think the uploaders, that's the future. Another question is, are you consuming or creating a legacy in the meeting industry, in your company, in your society, in your village, wherever you work? We have to create a legacy. And it's also about if we are creating the new agenda of the future, cross sectors, cross industries, between different companies, small and big, private not-for-profit, societal entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship, business entrepreneurship, political entrepreneurship, all those interfaces, I think the future meetings will be held in the interface, the in-between spaces. And I think that's the, the value will be created in those places, that's for sure. And it's also about what is the opportunity cost. People say, well, we, don't have, we can't afford a meeting. One of the questions is, how do we calculate? Should we maybe think about what's the opportunity cost for not having a successful meeting? I think we should. So, having said that, why meetings? And I would give one context. My global leadership role in PwC is for public sector. And if you look about cities and regions and even state-owned entities in a lot of countries around the globe, they compete on a lot of things. Talents, money, venture capital, jobs, attention, visitors, public service, but meetings and events. A more and more growing, I would say, industry to really catch the, the great meetings, not only the World Soccer Game and the uh, Olympics and so on and so forth, but those meetings who can add value, who can connect people, not only connect with cables or Wi-Fi, because I think we're going from connectivity to contactivity, which means social interaction, as you had when I came into this room. That's the future. So that's why meetings should be considered as a part of the strategy for Landskrona, which is a great city, it's a city of the future, it's a city of the future, and have a, has a great opportunity space to be leveraged on. And I think that's why you're here as well. Having said that, you can look upon this map, and you know, in the houses, we know exactly who is in charge. But in between the houses, the red one, we have no idea. The biggest, you know, ground is in between the houses. My question to you is, who is orchestrating and leading the process of interaction between the houses? There are no bosses, no managers, just people like you and I who can take the initiative and connect the dots and do something. Could be, the, could be schools, could be not-for-profit organizations, who has an idea to start to work and create a vision for, for a specific target group or something like that. If you look upon this from a higher perspective, you can say this is about an interface between university, private sector, the big ones and the small ones. It's also about the uh, not-for-profit sector, very much the social entrepreneurs and the, the people, the enthusiastic citizens walking the street. And the city government or a regional government has the role to create the space for this kind of playground for growth. Fi figuring out and finding a way how to make it happen, how to create new strategies in different areas. Landskrona and a lot of other cities are working currently with these kind of things in Skåne, in the, in the region around Öresund. So it's about facilitating, creating prototypes. And I would like you to remember the word prototype, because I think all process design, all kind of interface, new in inventions and interactions, is about making prototypes. That means that we have to understand that it's intellectual capital who will create the difference. 
It's not what we can touch upon, it's not what we can see, but maybe it's the knowledge, the wisdom, the relationships, the friendship, uh, and, 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 and brand issues which will make the difference. Which means we have relationship capital on, on this uh, dimension, which means human capital, that's the individual, you and, you and I. How much are we interconnected to the different things happening around the globe? Do we have business intelligence 2.0 trying to capture what's happening? If so, that's great. Next level is the company level. That's the structural capital. Concepts, ideas, methods, processes. Do we work with business intelligence on a company level? Great if we do. And the third level is society. The societal level and the societal entrepreneurship needs to have all sectors, all industries involved. That means we need to create global relationships on individual level, organizational company level and society level to try to capture the great trends around there. We can call it mega trends, we can call it giga trends or terra trends. I think it's terra trends because it's exponential development. Take globalization, global and local. Take co-opetition, competing and collaborating. Take sustainability. Take urbanization, urban and rural. And then you can take a lot of other things, for example, territorization. It's not organization, it's the territory. It's not about Lanskona's city organization. It's about the plot of land called the Lanskona area. If we have a territorial perspective on meetings, things will change. So territorization linked to urbanization, urban and rural, I think it's the most important in this part of the world when we have Lund, Malmö, Copenhagen, Lanskona. And five minutes from here, when I am living, it's peaceful, it's quiet, it's dark, it's space, it's starlight. Five minutes, right in the midst of the Lanskona, you have all this pulse, all this interaction possible to meet the people, to go to cinema, to a theater like this, Incredible room, by the way, and so on and so forth. So intellectual capital is actually what we have down here. We only see what we can touch. So a new perspective, even on the meeting. Big meetings are being held around. We are working now with this, Rio, Plus 20, and a lot of other big, big meetings. Sochi Olympics, uh, South Africa World Cup was a fantastic event. Five billion for each new arena. But the legacy which was created for the meetings during the World Cup was tremendous. The kids in Johannesburg are still w walking around with the shirt for the football team on, living the dream which was happening and coming through when they said, we need to be relevant for the next season. We need also to go for the Olympics. That's a meeting. How to make that happen? You need to be a optimist. Hope for the best and plan for the worst. So, then we can say, what is then a meeting? What's the value proposition? Maybe it's a political activity. You have to go, your boss said, go to the meeting. Not very funny. Or you can say, well, it's a conversation and, a, and a, it's exchange of ideas. Or it's a human interface and, and space for innovation. It's a knowledge and wisdom accelerator. I think that's much better. It's a time for uploading and downloading. It's relationship building. And we need to define or it's maybe it's a generator for vision and dreams. The question is, what do we come, what kind of expectations do we have when we come to the meeting? Political meeting, business meeting, not-for-profit meeting, doesn't matter. Again, a meeting is a different thing. We need to define it, we need to create the purpose, we need to create the objectives, and sometimes we need to create the KPIs as well, to follow up and understand what is successful or not. You can take the same metaphor and think about what's a business conference and then you can ask a lot of meeting place, business place, social intelligence place, innovation place, or a knowledge place. You can think the same about an airport. What is an airport? Is it a, and so on and so forth. Again, how can we slice the cake slightly different and try to understand more with asking the right question? You might know that there is a new science called Quizix, the art and science of questioning, asking the right question at the right time. So Google Quizix and get those really fundamental, deep questions. How should we make the next, how should we take the next step? Having said all that, we need to figure out when a city or a region or a nation should arrange a small or a big meeting. How should we calculate? 
Historically, we start to focus, well, this is the meeting industry, this is the convention bureau. And it's about the hosting city, and this is the first little bulb here. How many came, how many tickets did we sell? And then we figure out, well, was maybe plus minus zero, was okay. But if we start to think about that's probably not the outcome and impact of the meeting. Then we need to expand our thinking and say, well, maybe we should not focus on the meeting industry. It's not about the convention bureau. It's about the participants and their industries who came. The creative industry, the eco industry, the mobility industry, the healthcare or the well-being industry, and so on and so forth. Because when they come home, they have contracts, they have relationships, they have business deals that would create jobs, and add value, profit, and growth. With that model of calculating, we also need to figure out what is the, these meetings, sorry, the, these participants' industry, for example, the, the mobility industry, they are coming to Detroit, or they're coming to New York, or they're coming to Kuala Lumpur, and it's a, a completely different analysis. If we have a meeting here in Lanskauna, and we analyze that, Bob, the opportunity revenue is to analyze what's the complete and total impact of those who met and what was signed. We, we, when we develop or evaluated, I would say, the World Handball game in Malmö, Copenhagen two years ago, all analysis was, was made in this quadrant. And it was plus minus zero. And that was good. But the impact was tremendous. Because there was a VIP lounge and there's a lot of things happening, a lot of experience happening, and contracts and deals signed which we never capture in the accounts. So we need to help each other to figure out what is the model for how to look upon a meeting in financial term or value creation terms. It's not only about finance, because a meeting is a financial thing, it's a social thing, it's an intellectual thing, it's a cultural thing, and it's an experience thing, and so on and so forth. So how do we measure in those different dimensions? Then we can take art and science of the knowledge economy for some well-known professors from Berkeley, California, from Lund, from Hong Kong, whatever. And the traditional approach to what's the, the, the uh, profit on a meeting is, here you have the meeting. As soon as you've had a meeting, it goes right down in the basement. But if, if you apply the knowledge economy thinking about creativity and, 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 and I would say the exponential opportunity of those meetings being held, those companies taking action and doing the next thing, we have an exponential creation, exponential increase of value and growth. And this is very logic. So we need to apply both the traditional economy and calculation sets and the knowledge economy and a more modern approach to what kind of value were added. And even in financial terms, that will mean that there is a, an increase of, of, of value created after the meeting. So again, we have the wrong map, we have the wrong GPS system, we have the wrong KPIs to really capture and to debate and discuss why should we go for these different types of meetings. Okay, then it's also about return on investment. And I think the, the, the point here is we used to measure input, how much money, how much people, how many hours. Then we measure output, how many meetings, how many people met, da 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 da. We don't measure societal impact, societal outcome. So if we can go from input to output to outcome to impact, we have a completely different scorecard how we look upon what is the experience industry 2.0 when we address it into a specific meeting and designing the process, designing the experience in the room with lights, with uh, uh, different tastes, smells, uh, sounds, uh, and all those kind of things. And by the way, maybe you know that uh, uh, companies like uh, Osram and Philips, they're, they're, as we speak, thinking about what should they do when they don't create light bulbs anymore. Because in two, three years' time, each and every material will be like a light. And right now, when I spoke with a professor in nanotechnology last week, he said, we are lacking today an operator of designing the light indoors. So we can have the same light as the body needs for the body clock, so we can be more effective in the morning, during lunch, and the afternoon. But today we have no service provider. 
This is called service innovation. It's like when Rolls-Royce said, well, we sold engines to aircrafts before. Today, we're selling flight hours, and we're leasing out the engines. Or it's when the big electricity company sell, said, say that we sell uh, kilowatt hours, and then they get paid by per hour and kilowatt hour. No, in the future, what will they sell? They will probably sell indoors climate. We can have less kilowatt hours, invest in a property, have a bigger profit and a less consumption. It's a business innovation. Or a company who addresses or creates uh, or manufactures drills. Maybe they are not in the drilling industry, maybe they are in the hole industry. There are many different ways of making a hole, light, sound, a drill, etc., etc. So what's happening right now, I would say, that's the biggest challenge for the meeting industry. Who should meet and why? What industry are you representing? Those who were before in the healthcare industry are today in the well-being industry. It's a completely different industry. Those who were in agriculture before are today in food and water. And two weeks ago in, in New York City, they printed out the lasagna and a beef steak in a 3D printer. They ate it up and it was great. It has nothing to do with agriculture, but has a lot to do with food. It's challenging the whole agriculture industry. Transportation, public transport, automotive, cars, transports. And then I met the, the CEO of Audi and he said, we have a dream for a car-free city. I said, that's interesting, what do you mean? Well, we are selling the transportation system. So all those industries are moving into a new amalgamation and fusion process called mobility. And then we have the eco industries and we have the creative industry. Those five industries I've just mentioned is what we see when we and made an analysis for the European Commission two years ago for 29,000 M&As, mergers and acquisitions. What companies are buying whom and why, and what do they see for a new value proposition? So the biggest meeting taking place is the meeting between the new industries. And you who are process designers and uh, creators and, and uh, art people and consultants, I think, start to think about who should be invited not in the old paradigm, but in the new configuration of the new industries, right into the room, old and young, people from different countries, etc., etc., all that kind of diversity. But think about what, what kind of industry will I be competing in, including my clients. Having said that, we can say truly that meetings are becoming smaller, shorter, more frequent, greener, and using more high-tech. Quite obvious, and you can think about that this is not the history, this is a hologram in 3D, it's CNN, it's a, it's a discussion about will Obama win the first election, 2008. So the guy here is, in the, in the, is a hologram, it's not a person, and it was sent from Silicon Valley right to New York. And people thought he was in the studio, he wasn't. So this is the cloning 2.0. So think about when politicians and you, yourself will be at three different places at the same time. That's effectiveness. <laughs> and you, I deliver right now two, two free speech at the same time, like a hologram. It's a scary thing, but the point is, this is not the future, this is archaeology. It's history, it's happened four years ago. And people think this will be the future. Well, it won't be. Maybe more in a, in a in, in, uh, you can say, more, more frequently used, yes, but the innovation is not new. So having said that, you can also see this is the future of, of uh, the, the big exhibition and, and maybe big conferences. I was in Puerto Rico some uh, months ago, I spoke for a lot of people, and they said, we have a dream. Instead of having the 3,000 people here each and every year, we will have a meeting with all of them each and every third or fourth month. And this is what you see on your screen. You have your cursor, your mouse, and then you walk in, you click on the auditorium, whew, then you see like this, whew, and then you see you, and an, like an avatar, and then you have the meeting. You're still on your desk in Lanskona. Again, it's nothing new, it's old, but we think it should be new. But the question is, how can we apply it right now in a way of creating more intelligent, more virtual reality or real virtuality meetings together with the most winning game, of course? Coming together, looking into your eyes, talking, smelling, hearing, you know, interacting. So the virtual meetings, I think they're driving 
the real meetings. Because the more you meet virtual, the more you would like to meet really, in, in reality. So, uh, we need innovation. This is a kind of a limousine service in Manila two years ago. It's called Non-Finding Taxi. He didn't know where to go, so he said we need to talk to the, here is the driver, and that's the client. So they have a meeting in this cab, and they, he, they tell him where to go, and then he fix it. His plan is in two years' time to change the name of the company, then it will be called Finding Taxi, because then he has been around in the city for quite some time, and now he knows. So innovation is needed. And I would say, thinking about meetings, thinking about how should we look upon the experience of being in a meeting, it's about, number one, picking low-hanging fruits. Business as usual. How many seeds are there in an apple? Six, eight, twelve, maybe. So we focus on what we see, the fruit. We don't focus on what we don't see. This is the intellectual capital, back to what I said in the beginning. So the question is, how can you act as a city gardener? Give the right water, fertilizer, take care of the soil, the root system, to cultivate the ground, the playground, the meeting ground, for intellectual, really, I would say, uh, highlights and exploits and great events and experiences. Probably we have to do like this. We have to turn our ideas upside down and start to focus more on the culture, the meeting culture, the soil, the, fer the fertilization, and, 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 and the quality of the soil and so on and so forth. And we need to ask a new question, which probably will be, how many apples are there in a seed? Which means how many ideas or how many jobs can come out of this one meeting? It's going to be indefinite. Because, again, do we focus on the input or do we focus on the outcome and the impact? The three last sentences. What I think we need is a higher density of experience and knowledge of innovation in our meetings. And it's about relationships, and it's about creating higher value. We also need a lower friction. Friction is, you know, going on the ground. We need sometimes, sometimes we need some oil on the ground so people can move more, 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 with more speed, with better speed. Uh, so it, this is the, the friction between industries, friction between sectors of society, friction between companies, friction between people. How can we help them to create a new kind of freak? Uh, 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 how can we help them to create a lower friction when people meet? And finally, it's about the frequency. And the frequency is about the speed between the participants, the, 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 the number of dialogue, of, of, of consulting, and having a feedback and taking a new approach in a new direction. And I would say the old type of meetings was in a very analog way. And you can think about the very, very deep sound, like a, a, a bass tone. And the frequency curve is like this. 20 hertz about. Okay, 20 hertz. Analog. But the future of a meeting, if you, if you include what's happening in between when you meet here, when you meet digitally, virtually, I think it's a 20,000 hertz digital frequency. And that's, it's very different about how people behave. And every leader leading meetings needs to understand what kind of frequency does these guys sending on when they come, before, under, and after. And if we get that right, we can probably say this is just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was incredibly valuable. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to get this language on what we've been doing. I can also say that this language is tonally. Um, so one of the things that happened yesterday was that all of our participants took turns down in the basement to crawl around on the floor <laughs> with their eyes closed, saying, making sounds yeah. and being animals, which makes complete sense in the light of everything you just said. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you after about <laughs> why that is. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.